Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Boris Arcade. In this section, we will be learning about a logical concept in C programming, which is how to find the factorial of a given number using C programming. Before starting the video, I would like to request you people to please like and share our videos with your friends and family and also subscribe to our channel Codus Arcade and press the bell icon so that you receive notifications regarding our latest updates and you do not miss out on our future uploads. Thank you. So let's get started. As I said, today's topic is finding the factorial of a given number using C program. Let us go to the editor so that I can show you how to write a C program to calculate factorial of a given number using recursion. After the execution, we will come back and see how the program execution occurs. So let's quickly move on to our editor. As you can see here, I am inside my editor screen, which is code blocks. So let me start by including the header file. And here I will take my main function of the integer data type. And inside the main function, I will start by writing the logic. So first I will take a variable n for the count and then I will take another variable to store the result. Now I will use the print statement so that I can ask the user the value of n. Then I will use the scanf function to read the input from the user. So it will be percent %d address of the variable n. So this thing is done. Here I will take the result variable and I will call the factorial method which I have to define outside of the main function. Factorial of n. So this is also done. After that we will be printing the result. The factorial of Person D is person D comma then for the first person D it will be the variable n and for the second person D it will be the results variable. So this is also done and just because it is and and just because this function is returning integer values I have to give return 0. So now this thing is done. Now let us go on to the function definition. So here it will be the same thing, integer data type. Then it will be factorial as I have written here. As you can see here, factorial. So it should match factorial. And then I have to take the variable which is integer and it int n. The variable can be same no matter what. It doesn't clash it's upon your wish no problem so now let us go on to the definition of the function so here it will be int result and now the first condition is in factorials we know that the factorial of 0 is 1 so we will use the if statement n equal equal 0 then the result will be is equal to 1. Now we will go on to the else block if the value of n is not equal to 0. Then we will start the else block. So inside the else block, we will use the actual formula for the factorial of a number. So the formula is result is equal to n into factorial n minus 1 and after that the final thing that we have to do is we have to return the result. So with this the logic of the program is complete. Now the question is that why is this called a recursive function? As I told the definition of recursion is that a function calling itself is called a recursion or a recursive function. Therefore, as you can see here, 
inside the function definition of factorial, I am again calling my factorial method. So inside the same definition of factorial, I am calling my factorial function or method. Therefore, this is called a recursion. So I hope you have understood this. Now let us look at the execution process, how this factorial will actually execute itself. Let's see that. So now let's see how the method spaces are created, how the control will go in a forward direction and how it will again come back. So first the memory will be allocated to mainframe. So the starting frame will be the mainframe. We are declaring the end value and we are declaring one more variable result and then we are reading the value of n. In the next step we are calling the factorial method. Suppose let us take the value of n to be equal to 4. So it will be factorial of 4. The result will not be assigned. First factorial of 4 method has to get completed and executed. So method space will be allocated to factorial of n value 4. Then the factorial method execution will start. First if n equal equal 0 or 4 equal equal 0 as you can see condition is false so the if block will not execute control goes to the else block in the else block n into factorial of n minus 1 executes so 4 into factorial of n minus 1 that is 3 now to multiply this expression first we have to know the value of factorial 3 so one new method space will be created for factorial n equal to 3 here if 3 equal equal 0 and we see that the condition is false. So in this case also if block, if block will not execute. Control goes to the else block. In the else block it is 3 into factorial of n minus 1 that is 2. Again we should find what is the value of factorial 2. So one new method space will be created for factorial n equal to 2. Now if 2 equal equal 0 here also the condition is false. So, the if block will not execute. Control goes to the else block. In the else block, it is 2 into factorial of 1. Again, we have to find what is the value of factorial 1. So, one new method space will be created for factorial n equal to 1. Now, if 1 equal equal 0, here also the condition is false. So, if block will not execute. Control goes to the else block. In the else block, it is 1 into factorial of 0. Now one last method space will be created for factorial n equal to 0. Now you have to observe carefully. If 0 equal equal 0, here the condition is true. Now else block will not execute. In all the previous method spaces, we have seen that the else block was executed and the if block was terminated. But in this case, if block will execute and the else block will be terminated. So in the if block, result equal to 1. That means in the result variable, the value 1 will be stored. After the if else statement, what is the next statement? Here we are returning the result. So return 1, which is the value of result. The value of result here is 1. So the value 1 will return back here as you can see on the screen because the factorial 0 function started executing from this position. So result of the factorial 0 function will return back to the same place. So 1 into 1, therefore result equal to 1. So again this result will return back here. So 2 into 1 and now result equal to 2. So again this result value will return back here as you can see on the screen. So now 3 into 2 that is result is equal to 6. So again this result will return back here. So 4 into 6. Now the result value is equal to 24 as you can see here. So this result will be finally stored into main method result variable. So result equal to 24. And now we are printing this result which is 24. This value 24 is actually the factorial of 4. So this is the end of the program execution. Now let us move on to our editor again so that I can show you the output of the program that you wrote earlier. 
So here, as you can see, I am inside my editor again. So this was the program that we wrote earlier. Now let me run it so that I can show you the output. I'm running it. And let me just zoom it for you. So here, let me take the value which we saw earlier. Let me take 4 and press enter. And you can see the factorial of 4 is 24. So we are getting the correct output. So let me press any key. So this is it guys. This is how we write the program and execute it to find the factorial of a given number. I hope you like the video. If you have any doubts, you can post them in the comment section. I will be very happy to clarify those doubts. Thank you and happy learning. See you guys in the next video. Thank you.